to Don't Mind the Golden Handcuffs Podcast or DMGH Podcast, a place for future and present attorneys or any young professional to find the motivation they need to further their minds, careers, and financial success. It's hard to make it out there when you came from nothing. We want to provide you with some help with that. Of course, a one-person team couldn't accomplish this. DMGH Podcast experienced guests will guide us on this road to career and financial success. First, let's take this law thing one step at a time with your host, Chris. What's up, guys? It's Chris from DMGH Podcast. Today's episode is going to be weird. It is going to be my review of Avengers Endgame. And I know this has nothing to do with the law, nothing to do with money, but I'm a huge geek, as you see all around me. Uh, So I wanted to chime in. And I figured this is the right time to do it. Enough time has passed. This full episode will be a spoiler. So if you haven't watched the movie and you want to, then don't watch this episode. So to all the four people that are watching, if you haven't watched Avengers Endgame, walk away. Uh, So overall, I have a couple issues with the movie that I didn't like. Uh, So I want to go over that first before I just give my general opinion about the movie. And I have this small bookmark that I took notes on. So, number one, I did not like the fact that Thor was a slob the whole, pretty much the whole movie besides the first, I don't know, half an hour or 40 minutes or so. Uh, I I was waiting for a redemption story. I was expecting at some point in the movie him to like, I don't know, kind of like a Rocky moment where he ends up uh, dropping all the weight and uh, stopped drinking beer and just kind of became the Thor we know and love. Uh, and I kind of didn't like that. He was pretty much that slob the whole movie. I mean, Thor is the god of thunder. You would think that at some point he would get everything together. Um, along with Thor, just the topic of Thor, I also didn't like that he just gave away his throne in like off of a split second thought. I know it had to do with his mother telling him, um, giving him the advice she did. Uh, I forgot what she said, but she said, um, pretty much in essence to be who he is not who he's supposed to be Uh, and i get what that means i get how that affected him but he literally just gave his throne away something that i mean it pretty much made the first two thor movies useless i mean both movies was pretty much uh, both movies are pretty much his his path to becoming a, a king you know and he went through all that change and then gives it away like it's a starbucks gift card i mean that makes no sense and then he gave it to a person that most of her life she was um against the throne i mean you can't just forget the fact that she after that battle um with thor's sister uh she pretty much was left and she was pretty much against asgard for the rest of her life until uh thor ragnarok uh actually Going back, it was three movies building up to Thor actually taking um, the realm, you know, taking his position as as the king of Asgard. And he just kind of gave it away to someone who never really wanted it or even cared about Asgard, you know. So I thought that was really weird. I didn't like that. It felt a little bit too R.A. Uh, in terms of make, uh, rationalizing this decision, of course, they're going to try to resolve this in the next Thor or the next Guardians of the Galaxy or as Guardians of the Galaxy. So I'm sure they'll resolve that at some point. But... As a conclusion to phase, whatever it is, phase three or whatever four, it didn't make sense to me that he would just give that away, you know? Uh, so I also didn't, I loved Professor Hulk uh, as a geek that was like, that was awesome. Uh, especially when he was at the diner just chilling and he had fans and he was wearing glasses and a cardigan as if he's uh, like a hipster of some sort or something. So that was awesome. Loved Professor Hulk. Did not like how he never really showed his strength in Endgame. So, I mean, in the Infinity War, we're all confused because the Hulk never came out, right? The Hulk never showed his uh, potential, his strength, that he never came out of Bruce Banner, right? Um, and in 
Endgame is the same thing. He he didn't do anything. I mean, I get it. He snapped. He did a lot emotionally and stuff like that. But but it, it was even funny because when they went back in time to where I think Avengers one took place, I think, or it was Age of Ultron? I forgot. They went. I think pretty sure it was the first Avengers. Uh, he, they were making fun of the Hulk because the Hulk was uh, trying to flip over a car and like he wasn't really able to do it that well. He was very sensitive. Uh, and he, I kind of, that was funny. I would laugh, but I was expecting at some point like Hulk to be like Hulk mad and just destroy everything that never came. Uh, so I didn't really like that. Uh, also, I don't know, maybe I'm obviously not a time travel expert. I'm not a, uh, I'm just a a lost, a graduating law student or graduated law student. Um, but I found the issue in the whole time as like the whole time travel. So the whole thing about Endgame was that when you go back in time and change something, you don't change that timeline. Uh, another timeline branches out and um, you then uh, affect that timeline, that other one that sprouted out. So when Captain America went back in time and gave back the stones uh, and then he went back to Peggy, that change should have created a separate timeline. So I don't get how he is in he he appeared on that bench. It really makes no sense because if he changed the time and ended up staying with Peggy, then he never would be in that timeline where he's there with the Avengers sitting at that bench. He would always be in that timeline where he's with Peggy unless he mastered time travel on his own. Um, of course, I know there's fan theories about this, but none of the years, theories I heard have been confirmed and they sound just as crazy as everything else that happened. So it could be possible that there's an explanation, but going off the rules that the end game set for time travel, it doesn't make any sense that he would just be sitting on the bench, which goes to, I guess my, my next point was the Iron Man's death and Captain America's, um, I guess retirement. Uh, I, I get why they did it that way. It seemed like they should have theoretically, they should have made it into two movies in my opinion, end game part one and end game part two, because it seems like Captain America was quickly wrote in because they needed to solve his, find out a way to get him out of the, of the, of the series of the, you know, the Avengers. Uh, so I get why they did it, but it seemed really rushed. So it seems like they should have made it to two parts. Uh, it's because Captain America's th- uh, part, I really wish I saw him see Peggy f- and then tell her he's there to stay with her, you know, something like that, where you kind of saw that moment that he went back for her and the way she reacted. I mean, I can only imagine how Peggy reacted when, when he went back and he's, he actually showed up to that last dance or whatever like that. I know we see a little bit of that dance, but we're not told as if that was the dance that he was supposed to meet her, uh, at or whatever. And, um, so I wish we had more of that, but I get why they did it right. They did it because first of all, they probably were, weren't approved for doing more than a movie longer than three minutes, three hours and one minute. Uh, and they probably wouldn't wouldn't be approved to make it into two parts. And as a fan, I would be kind of mad if they made it into two parts because I just waited a whole year for this movie, and now you're going to have to make me wait a whole nother year. I mean, no, I, I would have been upset. But that's why I'm saying these critiques are critiques, but uh, I'm not complaining about it. I, I guess this this leads us to the, my, my actual feeling about the movie. I loved it. I thought it was... Uh, I mean, when Captain America picked up uh, Thor's hammer, Milnir, whatever, I always pronounce it incorrectly, uh, that was, <laughs> I, I looked at Gabby and I was like, she she could tell that my whole life just was complete, you know? Uh, so it was it was amazing, 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 amazing. Uh, Infinity War, in my opinion, was a better movie as an independent movie. Uh, and Endgame was fantastic, but Infinity War was way better. But that's because the directors had a much harder task with Endgame, a much harder task. They needed to not only complete the plot, uh, end two characters, while also leaving enough questions where people are interested in the new characters they presented, uh, still interested in Captain Marvel, and they pretty much had to do a lot of different things in one movie. So it, it, there's no way that they could have made it as good as Infinity War while also doing these things. But overall, um, if you're if you're watching the movie, I would think it, the best way to watch it is to take kind of the whole day off and watch Infinity War and Endgame right after. Take it as one movie, because that's kind of it looks like kind of that's what they meant. And I feel like if they, I feel like the directors they probably wanted to make it into make uh, Endgame into two parts. I mean, I would think that someone that has dedicated their whole lives to 
to creating this, this story arc would would definitely want to do it right and i feel like they did it right but i, c- I could definitely tell that it, it could have been longer um but overall it was an amazing movie i suggest uh everyone watch it especially if you're into these movies uh but uh overall i give it like an 8.5 out of 10 and affinity war got like a 10 out of 10 for me uh but of course, I, I could be wrong about these things. I'm sure I'm wrong about some of these things, and there's a lot more to talk about. There's parts that I just didn't like about it and parts that I loved about it, uh, like ha- um, like Hawkeye and uh, uh, the way that his whole experience during that movie. I mean, he was kind of one of the stars in the movie, and I thought that was great, even though it's kind of weird that a guy with a bow and arrow is still still stands a shot against any of these villains but either way loved it um so let me know what you think uh, if you agree with me or if you disagree with me if you think i'm crazy for the for this uh but as you can tell i love all of this stuff i love marvel i love dc this is a dc shirt but i love marvel um but yeah so hope you guys enjoy this episode. This is a little bit of a branch off of what I normally do. So if you didn't like it, <laughs> I get it. Uh, if you did like it, uh, awesome. So stick with me and continue to listen. And I hope you guys like the material I'm putting out. If you have any opinions as to what I should be talking about, just send me a message or email. Go on my website, dmjhpodcast.com. It has a link to where you can reach me through email and stuff like that. But yeah, as always, it's Chris from DMGH Podcast. I'll talk to you all soon. Thank you for listening. Morning dew, familiar ache. Being awake, being almost me. I breathe sweet water.